imagine everyone every once in a while it's got to be like okay i love this ecosystem i you know i'm here i've been waiting for six months one year two years three years four, whatever it is and everything looks primed to pump everything looks great there's people coming out just begging to talk about our ecosystem and how bullish they are but the price is still not that x whatever x you can think of in your mind how do we kill the sadness now well uh, i think first of all we're above sack price so you know take a win right we're above sack so let's not let's not focus on oh no we're we're, we're not under sack anymore. we're above sack so we're, like, for one coin we're for one sack. coin and so that's okay that's not bad um so let's there's nothing wrong with that so let's let's think about the, the positive so we have we're above sack we know richard's ready to prime and ready to go we know he's he's willing to inject capital when he sees fit which is also very smart and he's going to time the market and make it the most beneficial for us there's no doubt about it plus the legal stuff you know but outstanding but that's really not that, as much of an issue as people make out to be it's just sec can fly cable kite for i care i mean who cares but whatever um but it's it's good the market's good now we have tools now with omnis you can be swing trading i did a whole videos on this and making money even if it goes up and down so why are you sitting there not earning more pulse and pulse x i mean you could easily do that with the tools that are exist on the on chain you can use all the ph ecosystem to park money and earn interest you know you can look on loans you can you, you can you can buy get loan token and stake and earn some fees you know go to barista get bean tokens it's not, now it's got you know the extra yield there there's, there's stuff out there. If you're sitting and not making money, if you're just sitting idle, there's farms. I mean, incentive tokens, what, a couple bucks now? What is is two ninety nine. If you were in farms right now with your tokens, you can be making incentive token at two two nine nine a lick. I mean, come on. I mean, there's really no reason be, anybody be really depressed. It's just going to take more and more capital to bring the price up. That's just the way the markets are. I mean, that's, that's a we got what twenty some price here. It is fifty seven million dollars in the Pulse Plus Pulse X pool right now. And so, you know, it takes a lot of money to push that price up. Just be patient. And that's all I can tell people because we're going we're, we're gonna to bring tools to the market. And we're going to make it a lot easier here very shortly with Tetra and the automation services to help help people get be a lot more efficient with their capital. They can earn money while they're sleeping. And that's going to be the big game changer in DeFi and you know, on Pulse Chain. And when other chains hear about it, maybe they'll bring the money over. So, because I know at True True DeFi, we're working. We're going to work with Spark Swap. I'm going to put the, the we're going to link the Spark Swap bridge on our P two X website, so people can bridge over BSC and play the game if they want to. Um, and we'll have swap features, you know, with Omnis right there on the front. So we're doing everything we can to integrate and let, make it easy for people to participate in DeFi to buy some pulse. You know, come in, buy some pulse, you know, use the system, may earn your yield. It's there. There, there, there's opportunity and tools there. There's really no reason anybody really be depressed. I mean, I mean, if you're not making money in, with the tools you have now, you're doing something wrong. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what you're, what you're, what people are doing, but there's there's really no reason for you if if the, unless you just on time uh, to use the tools that are available. Well, I, I got a counter actually that may be interesting to go into. So perhaps a lot of people who may, maybe they're not advanced or they just, they literally just don't want to take the risk. They're like, ah, I know these other protocols. I mean, besides, I guess, Inc, you know, we know Pulse X is, it's Pulse X, but in general, they're like, I'm afraid if I move money around, I'm going to start trading and I'm going to start losing. I don't want to trade. I literally just want to park it somewhere where it's going to earn yield, but the yield is just not, is, you know, it's not, I'm not making thousands of dollars per day. You know, most people, even if they took all the coins they had, all the core coins, whatever, and they put them into something, they're just not going to make thousands of dollars a day at current prices. So well, you, for you can't make wanna... thousands of dollars a day unless you're a whale in any system. And it takes a lot of volume to do so. I mean, people, I don't want people thinking you get thousand dollars a day. I mean, you'll get twenty dollars a day, even with a big bag. I mean, you know, this is the ten thousand X ecosystem. Oh. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to give we gotta give them gotta give them some fish here. The ten thousand X well, ecosystem, it, I mean it can do it one day, but not today. That's the reality. You just can't earn that kind of yield today because there's not enough money coming in and move, be moved around. You can look at the transaction volume. You do the math and see the transaction volume and see how much is going through. And say multiply that times like a half percent or something. That's about all the yields going to be eked out of the system. And it ju it's just not that much. So, so looking at the lock protocols too, actually, this is this could be something too. So the the top, let's see, you know, we got validators, of course. I've talked about that a billion times. Liquid loans, we talked about that a lot. The bridge itself, um, I mean, fiat again. Uh, there's there's different leverage games and stuff like that. 
depending on your risk profile and how you know advanced you are for in crypto and all that stuff. Time pays me, ZKZX. Um, what are the you know earning income on the farm, for example, if you got Pulse and Pulse X? Well, yeah, I get. I guess that's. I'm trying to see what we can give people that that is the most useful to be like. Okay, I still can earn, and maybe those to maybe if you're earning tens of dollars per day, maybe that would turn into if prices go up hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars per day, even if you're not, you know, well, I know whales the most common nomenclature, but I mean, shark, you got dolphins, you got people who have a lot of capital in the ecosystem. So without, without just waiting and being excited about new protocols, which we totally are, how do you make a money in pulse chain today? I know you can cover a couple of things, but just in general, your whole, just your mindset of making money in pulse chain today as things currently are, how, how do you think about that? I think about it as where can my, my capital be treated best in, in what way? Farms are a good example. The Pulse, Pulse Sucks farms, you know, or, or all the ink farms, right? Ink's $3. It was 50 cents, right? If you, you know, three or four months ago, if you'd have had all your ink farms and you was earning one ink a day or whatever you were getting, your daily ink, right? And then you didn't sell them. You just held on to them. Now they're worth $3. So all the ink you've had is what, 4X, 5X, you know, if you'd earn that over time. That's all the pH ecosystem. You got all the LP pools with that from from the Fux pools. You could be earning Fux token, you know, and doing and, and doing that. You got SparkSwap. They have pools. Uh, Hoax Focus Finance has a whole list of farms on their website that you can go through and tell you all about them, the APRs, what their emissions are, and everything. I mean, that one website tells you every farm there is. You, you can just go there. And that's like that's one stop shop really to see what's what's available for farming. I mean. You get, then you get like loan, you get loan yield bearing tokens you can purchase and invest in. They're really, really cheap right now, you know. So all these things are there, and it depends on how much risk you want to take. And if you're not compounding, you're sitting and holding. The best thing to do if you just want to sit and hold and not do anything is stick it on the farm. You know, like Sparkswell's got some, they got the vaults now that they, even auto compound it for you, but you don't even have to do anything. So all these there's, there's tools out there being that are coming out every day. More, more stuff is being available to the average user. So, but we can, you can only educate people so much. And I, these communities, I know, are struggling trying to get the word out that, hey, we have new tools, new, new ideas, come use our stuff. Here's here, here they are. And so people just need to kind of just listen to the people talking about it, say, this is the stuff available. You can use these tools to make money. In the, in the current state, you know, the ecosystem too, of, of course, you know, I had the truck a minute ago and you can see that, you know, we're going up and then stair, you know, kind of like a staircase and stuff. It's it's February, the happening is coming up, and you know a few weeks or so. What do you think in the next? I mean, is it something that, without getting people too excited, would you be surprised if you didn't see any major moves or major news or just very cool things happening in this ecosystem for the next few weeks up until happening after the happening? Where do you, and you mentioned you think Richard's you know timing some things too. How do you think about? you know, what he may be timing and, and the, the bullishness of this, trying to encapsulate the bullshit of the ecosystem based on even more. We can look at the data, we can look at the numbers, all the stuff locked up, all the uh, ways to make money and so on. But price going up, how do you, how do you frame that for, for people at, at the current state? Well, you know, if, if the happening comes and then if you see a run on a rally on the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and they start shooting up, uh, I'm not sure exactly how much that's going to come over immediately to Pulse Chain because people will be chasing the green green candles over there. So we'll be a lagging indicator, so to speak, from that money once it it kind of caps out over there based upon the, the cycle and the news and ETFs and all the thing with doing Bitcoin. <clears throat> but Richard may end up using that to show people once that maybe that those those that thing peaks out and hits its limit, he may start pumping Pulse Chain showing, hey, there's green candles over here. Bring your money over here and chase them over here. You know, it's just faster and cheaper than Ethereum. And that would that that'd be how I would play it, I think, in some way like that, because you don't want to compete head to head with Bitcoin and Ethereum just because it's way more economic mass over there. So it's kind of hard to compete with a small new chain. But once there people kind of, the Ethereum fees are skyrocketing and it costs you hundreds of, hundreds of dollars to make a trade, people people say, wait a minute now, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Then they see Pulse Chain and there's there's your there's your marketing tool. Hey. You want to pay three hundred dollars for a trade? You can come over here and pay thirty cents, or three cents, or whatever it is. You know, here's some money, here's some green candles. Go chase them. There you go. And then now we have the influx of capital coming in the system. So, 
Uh, that's kind of how I look at the news. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I mean, it, it's going to be what's going to be as far as the news. We, we can't control the entire market, but we can react to the market properly. And Richard could, is, or, and whoever owns the, the wallets, to do that if we wanted to. What do you think you meant by this decorrelated tweet? Is Ethereum? Yeah, I talked about that yesterday. I did a stream on it. You know, decorrelated versus uncorrelated versus. I mean, is there anything to read into this one word tweet when mm -hmm. you tagged Ethereum? Yeah, because. Again, because he has access to that capital from the sacrifice, he can decorrelate, de de and we can move outside of Ethereum's movement, which is very true. Um, there's not that much Ethereum on Pulse Chain, I don't think, but statistically, there's more die than anything as far as you know, bridged over value, and the rest of it's very, very small. So even Ethereum moves up and down, it doesn't really affect a whole lot of pricing because there's not a lot of pairs, uh, which is done by design, obviously, by Richard and, and, and his team. So it's up to us to think about how we want to do or use our money. How we how do we bridge over ourselves? How do we enter the chain? So new users are you going to use Coast to come in, you know, and deposit money on Coast and come across that way? We're going to use Richard's Bridge, um, or maybe like, like Pulse LN or all, in the, all these other tools that exist to get get on get on chain. Uh, so or Binance through SparkSwap, all these are avenues, and these are just ways that. Uh, and this is the hardest part of all all this all chains, but this for us especially is like getting money in the chain and then getting it off again. And that's the biggest hurdle that we have to do in a very, very quick and seamless way without the eat slippage and all these other things. And, uh, but we're also new, very young chain. So it just takes time to get these things developed. And so that's kind of where we're at. And hopefully maybe Tetra will have some solutions in the future uh, through an automation services, make it easier for everybody. It certainly feels like we are prime. Like, I don't know how much more primed we can be. I look at the bridge. I look, I mean, on the fundamental side, we have general influencers coming here. They've seen the light, you know, so to speak. They they are they're calling for, you know, hex hex doing all this amazing stuff and pulse chain in the ecosystem. I see you know big people with big accounts talking about more every day. So we got a lot of people, new people on our side. We got you know active wallets and stuff. All the numbers, all the all the numbers of the ecosystem are going up in an upward trajectory from from what we can tell. So the fundamentals look super good. The mm -hmm. TA. I mean, I haven't heard anyone say the TA sucks for Pulse Chain or Hex. I've not heard. I've heard only the opposite in so many different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are we waiting on, Neil? Why? Capital. What? It's a it's a straight up capital deal. You have to bring money in to get the price go up. It's just that simple. There's no other way. There's no magic wand in make a wave. And Richard could probably tweet a bunch of stuff and maybe get people to kind of buy. But that's not that's taking money. So kind of already in the system and moving around, so to speak. To bring, but you got to bring bridge money in to bring value. There's, there's no doubt about it. it that's the only way this, the system's going to get bigger and grow. You know, if not, we just trade money. We trade coins amongst ourselves. And, you know, then whoever's the smartest trader wins, basically in that game. So, but that's just it's it's, it's a it's a basic numbers game. And so, what can you do to bring capital? So you got to come up with good products and services on your chain for people to use. So we're doing that with P2X. Uh, with, and we're going to try to build these games out so people can you know, participate, and maybe come over from other chains. And once maybe, you know these things are successful, other people build other stuff that's cool and neat. Um, if we can get really good you know, ROI on yield for farms and stuff, that's great. All those things are attractive to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the retail user who doesn't really understand it, but they see, oh, there's money to be made, I'll go there. Um, and I'm, I think I think, uh, I think Pulsar is coming out too, They're trying to do something with Titan X and try to come over here and and bring some of that money back. So all, there's just people working on it. It's just it's going to take a little time to get the money back over here to really pump the chains of uh, overall TVL. Is, is it just looking at you know because we see a lot of money coming in coming from Ethereum on the pulse chain through the bridge? You, you look at on Twitter, you see well hex, you see a ton of alerts uh, just every day. I mean some some going back the other way, but there's a lot just over and over and over uh, for weeks now. So the capital. You think a lot of it just hasn't been deployed yet, or do you think it's just it'll you know? I guess what is the what is the thing if you saw it, you'd be like, whoa, okay, this is like, is there you need to see like a multi million dollar come across the bridge before the fees are turned back on type of thing? Like, what what do we need to see to be like, okay, I would, this is a I would want I would want to see a, a steady increase of flow coming in at a, at, a, at a going up slowly, but gets more and more and more every day, every week, or whatever. When you start seeing more and more money coming in, not just one chunk at a time, but a good, steady, healthy flow, which is greater than what's going out, then you know you got something fixing to happen, right? Because people are coming in 
you know, you know, organically through the system. And you have whales and stuff coming in with big chunks every now and then. But as long as people aren't exiting out more than coming in, you will have a good system. And just like everything else, two years is a long time to wait. In two years, what, six months, it's a long time to get your money back if you, you were an early sacrificer, if you were a big sacrificer. We look at Rack and Michelle, what he did, he dumped the price, right? When he, he, he whoever, the, him, him himself, but, you know, that uh, his group he was in, the guys won the money out. Okay, it's fine. That's fair. Um, but at the end of the day, Richard has always said it's it's two groups make money in crypto, founders and long-term holders, period. If you hold a long time, you will get your value out. And we, what that time is, we don't know. And so we also must be patient because we, got, yeah, it's, we haven't even started the bull run yet. I mean, we're just now getting started. And it's not any, you know, yeah, Bitcoin's up with 50,000, I think, yeah, 51,000 right now. And that's good, but it's still not its all-time high. And it's now there's even more money behind it with ETFs and everything. I mean, Grayscale's, I think, I think it flipped its ratio already, if I'm not mistaken. It's no longer in a deficit. So it's time. So, you know, I hate to say this, but the, you know, the money printer's going to be turned on too. That'll really help, you know, accelerate, you know, the, the, the market and its sentiment. But until then, we're, we're going to do what we can. Yeah, it's just interesting to think about the, the the capital, the people who hurry here in crypto, What the money we have in now, and then the money that can come in from other ecosystems, and then the money that hasn't even entered crypto yet, and which may come in from, you know, from retail and otherwise, um, from people saying, hey, uh, money printer go burr, obviously, this is a, you know, risk, risk on time, I'm going to go, I'm going to go make, it's time to go make some money, time to, time to deploy some capital type of thing. And yeah, you mentioned also. I heard Sami talk about a lot the uh, you know Bitcoin. I think was it altcoins rally after Bitcoin hits all time high, something like that. Something, something like that. that yeah. 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 So maybe that's another you know key thing uh, to have not, no expectations about. Hmm. Well, yeah, and you know, it, it, I guess it also depends on how you. What do you want to do with your, your you know with your money, right? If you if you're here. To get a 10x and leave, and that's your goal, and that's your plan. Well, then that that, that you're going to do, you'll do that eventually. You know, if you're for 100x and leave, go ahead. But here's a question to add, people to ask themselves: A, what, they're here to make. We're all here to make money. Don't get me wrong. But what is better to, to get a a 10,000x or a 1,000x and leave, and then never come back, and, and or wait and come back in, say two years, three years later? And then eat up all that. You can eat a whole bunch of inflation cost with your with your value, or extract what you need to live well and maybe give yourself some a Ferrari or whatever. But leave the rest in to work and earn yield over time. So in the bear, you're still making money. Which is a better way? That's the question you have to ask yourself and how and address that in your own mind and how you want to use the tools that are going to be available on the blockchain, because. If you're just you have a trader's mentality, you want to get in, sell the top, and get out. Well, a nobody can order the time the top perfectly, and b you're you're going to have to come back in if you want to make more money in the future because you're not going to make it in traditional finance. What you're going to do? Just going to put your stick in a CD and earn you know three point eight percent or wherever they are now, five percent if you're lucky. Where you're earning fifty percent APR in a farm. I mean, the math says the smart money stays where it's at. You just extract what you need, live well for three or four years, and you're earning yield during the whole time you're in a bear. You average out way better. And when the next bull hits, you're already here. You're already poised. You can deploy the capital you've earned during the bear, accumulate more, and then you're ready to now have even more to sell on the next bull. It's just the way you got to think about it. I mean, you just can't – you just can't – got to think about diversification of your assets as well as diversification of yield generation in the system. And think about it and use the tools that are available and – Eventually, maybe you know if, if you want if you want to leave the chain, go even go, go somewhere else. That's your prerogative. But I mean, it's kind of silly to go in places, play in places that are more, way more expensive, you know, like Ethereum and stuff. You know, so this is and we have really really good innovation on this chain. Really, a whole bunch of people, good community, building the guys who build really cool stuff. They're really really smart and they know what they're doing, and they built the things out for for us to use. So I think I think we should use. Them. Do you think it happens this year? Do you think just based on price appreciation alone, I mean, forget yield, forget everything else. Do you think there'll be millionaires minted in full scene this year? Mm, maybe by the end of the year, it'd be close. It depends on the election cycle. There's a lot of things happening in, in the world. So it's kind of hard to know how the markets are going to react to 
to some of the things that are going to happen. Uh, but if we have a, a positive election outcome in the U.S., I think it will cause the money printers to go burr because uh, another bunch will get in there and spend money. <laughs> it just it's politics, you know. But, yeah. But then 2025, though, hopefully, at least according to all the models, it should be a pretty good year for us as well. So it's not just this year's next. So this is a to run up, right, for us. This is our time to get ready to run up. Just, you know, once as we mature with with, 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 the, with our protocols and stuff, I think you'll see some neat stuff. I mean, we got, like, NFT projects coming out with, like, I think Red Squirrel's got an NFT project that actually earns yield. I mean, come on. You can earn yield in NFTs. Why not? That's a whole other market. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about uh, uh, in a question about that in a minute, in a minute though. But on, on this, I just wanted to tie the button too on. So perhaps money printer go burr on the economic side closer to 2025. But if Bitcoin hits all time highs this year, do you think it'll be like that run up to all time highs? Maybe, you know, green light for alts, all that stuff mm -hmm. happening, post happening or, or whenever. Saying it'd be a cycle, just like every other cycle. But the exact you know, the cycles will repeat themselves. That's what they're cycles. They're not necessarily knowing when they're going to start, but once they start, you can, people's uh, you know emotional reactions are the same. People are people. They chase green candles. They do dumb things. They chase ooh, a next hundred X altcoin, meme coin. Let's do this thing. It happens. You know, they get wrecked, and the cycle continues. I mean, you know, it's just uh, the nature of the game. You know, but it's but if you think about it though. How many meme coins, how many games you do you remember in the past cycle that stayed alive and really made people happy and loving, loving the community? I mean, other than the really big ones that just have a ton of people that are stuck in their money, you don't remember them. All those, all those reflection games and all that junk that was going on, you know, Safe Moon and all that mess. I mean, it's, you know, of course, people try to resurrect them and, re and, and repackage them, but still, no, but they don't last. What does last? Things that are tools that people earn money, like Canva, Ave, GMX. So we have our four. Right? Six. Yeah, yeah, right. So, but see, think about it. You have to reinvent the wheel and come up with another, another, you know, another package, right? The old saying, you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig, right? I mean, you can do this all you want. You put a different coat of paint on it, it's still the same thing. Well, things people like will invest in that pig you now they will invest i know they do they, they will they, turn their portfolio to that pig they will start building upon that pig they will they will put a dress on that pig mm -hmm. exactly so but making money the, the people though who or who stay in the system use the tools i use canva ave you know ave um uh, uh curve um gmx which we have our forks with buck did with the, with the ph system you know, and all the things we're building, liquid loans of Power City, and all those things, those things will stand the test of time because they're tools. And yes, you'll have your 100 up, 10,000 next meme coins will come and go, but they're just going to come and go. Where, do you, where are people going to put their money afterwards? If they keep chasing it, they, they're going to eventually get caught and lose their money. Eventually, some of those people are going to realize, hey, if I take some of my profits and put them in these systems or use Tetra Automations to earn yield, I can at least keep, capture some of my value and not lose it on the next, next meme coin and just use port a part of my value. And so we, we, when we designed P2X, we, we thought about this, too, because we want people to have fun and not get wrecked. And maybe they'll just do some thinking. Maybe, just maybe, they can kind of use it as part of their portfolio in a way to make money over time and not and not just chase the next shiny object. A guy tweeted, again, tweeted decorrelated question mark. Do you read into that being this thing will be decorrelated? In a bullish narrative, is that what is that what we're mm -hmm. supposed to get from it? Exactly. Who is he? he no, I don't know if you remember back in his early videos, he talked about this. I'm sort of an RH historian in a way, so I may remember this. Yeah, what, what did he talk Heart's about? Hart's law. Remember the Hart's law thing? He talked about bond liquidity, right, and decorrelation. How why Hex had a lot of USDC that was backing it, and less Ethereum. That was his whole. That, that design made Hex really, really valuable because when Ethereum dipped, Hex could still be moved up, right? So you remember how that worked early on. Well, Richard's the same person. He understands that you can't tie Ethereum bonding and value to pulse chain. Hence the reason DAI is the main thing, not Ethereum. So that makes that makes a big difference because we need to be, we really need to move independently of these other things. So we don't really need a lot of those tokens over here to be bonded to our, our tokens. We need other things of better value, like you know, stable coins and stuff.
which is where it's all at. You ask me. I mean, you have lots of stable coins over here, uh, and especially our algorithmics, like with you know liquid loans and Power City and and uh, Coast and stuff. Things are are easily backed uh, by fiat. That's a much superior place to be than speculative assets that go up and down in value, bond liquidity too. And that's what would you Richard's thinking? You know, he's paying forty chess with all this. What he's doing. What would you, you know, what what could we look for to see more decorrelation from what we have today? Like what moves, you know, either the OA can make or you just see happening in the ecosystem where you'd be like, oh, we're we are moving towards like like full decorrelation. Like you know, mm -hmm. the, oh, full decorrelation doesn't make a lot of sense, but like we're becoming more decorrelated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Richard injects capital and buys up his assets, he likes that decorrelates his father because there's more value associated to tie those assets. So he brings a bunch of dying across a bridge, boom, there you go, right? And that's just how you do it. And eventually, if we get some whales who want to earn extra money and they want to stay safe, they take our stable coins like USDL and Coast and, and, and the UX, PXDC, and they go over to Ethereum and, and bond them with the stable coins over there. So now you have two chains with stables that go back and forth. And eventually, we're going to have a very, very seamless interoperability solution through whoever's going to do it to allow us to do cross chain swaps and everything. And we should be able to automate with Tetra. That's really going to make this chain pop. And I think that's where that's going to be like, that's going to be the silver bull that really makes us really, really uh, grow is that type of technology once it's available. And so that's just, just something to hope for in the future. So, so you're thinking stable coins paired with the blue chips is, is the, is the big move for decorrelation. Stable coins uh, paired with stable coins. You have a whole bunch of say, USDL paired with DAI and, and on, on Ethereum. See, so people can be on Ethereum and trading the, to the tokens. You see, so there's money being the value is locked on multi chains. It gives more value on our chain, you know, because it's just it's bonded liquidity. If if someone wants to take USDL and Ethereum on Ethereum and do it, great, it's even better. You see, so, so we're that's, so that's, that's kind of how you look at X. Mm -hmm. uh, just to just give people an example too. So we're going to pull sex and, and farms. What, what screams more decorrelation? What would you expect to see here? Well, we, when you look at the, uh, the, if you look at the die uh, pulse pair, it's the highest APR, right? Um, and, and, and the most liquidity. There's your decorrelation factor there. There's your, your layer one tied to, tied to a stable coin. If that was Ethereum, it would do that because Ethereum is up and down. Because Bitcoin's up and down. But this alone, right here, that one pair shows you that that's a massive decorrelation. That's 50%. Well, I say 50%. That's a chunk of the, the liquidity. But you get the hex pulse also, which is a lot more liquidity. But and hex is mostly tied to USDC, also on Ethereum. So you got it's still it's, it's a little more it's, it's still correlated to a point because of Ethereum bonding too and the pairs over there, but it's not as much as obviously pulse. So they all kind of help each other, but that that move alone, what Richard did with the, with that one LP pair, is it's it tells me all I need to know that I'm the word about what Ethereum does because Pulse can act independently. All Richard has to do, or the OA, whoever has to inject capital, and bring more in, and buy more Pulse, the price goes up. If there's over probably 150 million dollars of liquidity or more, maybe close to 200 right here, and there's only 15 million uh, mm -hmm. of of WEF. Tied to mm -hmm. pulse, exactly. Very interesting because I mean it's it's just a it's a lesser play if you know what you're doing. It, it, that's you would want that. You know you don't want. I mean people can do it themselves, the individuals. But as far as the real value, the real value is in the die. Because again, Ethereum is just tied to Bitcoin. You know, it's, and it's all you know bonded with that with Hart's law. So mm -hmm. this this is that's this having stable coins as your main asset uh, value asset uh, on the other side of the pair is far superior than anything else because in your asset is you know is real value backing it not just perspective value so you think about pulse and pulse x on that pair alone look at if you look at it it's got it's got a lot of liquidity doesn't it but it's apr is lower reason being is because they, they're, they're in it they're, they're locked together and pulse x really only goes up because of die pulse right that's where the value is now you get people pulling it around up in pulse actual pulse and all but in the day they're, they're bonded like you know hip to hip so to speak so they're always going to move in in tandem just though they may ratio it differently they're still going to move in tandem so you put you pump a bunch of pulses going to pull what pulse x 
you know, unless a whole bunch of people don't dump a bunch of pulse acts, it, it's still pulse is still going to stay pretty good value because of the die. Okay. So we're looking for a uh, ten million dollars of die being bridged in. Is that the is that is that going to kick us off? I mean, it'd be nice. It'd be it'd be a big green candle, right? Um, so yeah. it, it'd probably bump us up. You know, you know, fifty seventy five percent where we are now. It's just a, a nice good pump. That's what and but. Again, you need the money to come across, and that's what we need, either through the Bridges Bridge or either the coast or wherever, or you know, BSC and Sparkswap Bridge, whatever bridge that people are going to use, we got to get the money to come in. And that's a solution for our, 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 our problems with, with value right now. 